Hey friends, welcome to Daily Message. So glad to be with you today. My name's Ty Austin and I'm joining you from Maryland and uh, just really excited to get into the word with you today. In fact, I really felt compelled by the Holy Spirit to do this message um, because I've heard from and I've talked to some others and just really can tell that there is a spiritual attack against so many people right now and that attack is bringing despair that attack is bringing despair and i just felt so strong from the lord to put out this message in a time of prayer at the end to rebuke despair in the name of jesus to push back every voice that is trying to get you to give up that's trying to get you to back off, that's trying to discourage you, trying to question your confidence, your identity, pushing back all of that despair. And I really want to read to you out of the Word of God in an area that um, we've taught out of before, but I just felt like this is so relevant um, to us today. And in fact, you'll see this sometimes throughout Scripture where there would be a message to someone that would bring such discouragement and despair and it would actually be totally outside of their normal personality or maybe even their normal confidence. And you watch some of these men and uh, particularly with Elijah. And you remember in First Kings chapter 19, where Jezebel had sent a message to Elijah. Elijah was the prophet of God. He had this huge victory. He called down fire from heaven, uh, defeated the prophets of Baal, and then he got a letter from Jezebel. In fact, in First Corinthians, or excuse me, First Kings, chapter nineteen, verse two says, "Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as.'" the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. Verse 3, and when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life. When he saw that, when he saw that message, he arose and ran for his life and went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and but left his servant there. Verse 4, but he himself went a day's journey. He went by himself, isolation, into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he prayed that he might die and said, it is enough. Now, Lord, take my life for I am no better than my father's. And so he was laying under this tree. He was by himself. He had isolated himself because of a message from a woman who was a leader of people he just called fire down upon and basically annihilated. So think of how really illogical this would seem. He just won. He just defeated her, and yet because of a message that she sent directed directly to him, it was personal. Now he has this complete lack of confidence to the place of really telling the Lord, take me now. And I believe with all my heart, for whatever reason in the days that we live in right now, that there are messengers, and a lot of times they'll come through thoughts. Yes, it could come through a person. Yes, it could come through a text message or an email. But a lot of times what I'm hearing are people are waking up in the morning and they're having these thoughts and those thoughts are to attack your confidence. This happened to me just this week. I remember waking up in the morning and literally it was as if my eyes hadn't yet opened and I began to have these immediate thoughts of uh, really accusing someone else and having things that um, were preying off of my own insecurity. And it was as if in the middle of it, I knew immediately, why am I waking up with this thought? Why am I waking up thinking about this situation? And I knew immediately where this thought uh, pattern had come from. It came from the enemy. And so in the midst of that, I said, no, I'm not going to be thinking about this. This is Satan. And I, I, w- I woke up, got out of bed, and I moved on with my day and gave no place to those thoughts of despair, those thoughts of discouragement, those thoughts of accusation. And I believe with all my heart that the Lord is wanting to expose the attack of the enemy that has come against you, that there have been uh, thoughts that are not your own. And yet when you feed on them and you think on them and you allow them to roll around in your head and then they seep down into your heart, they breed real discouragement. And here's where I felt is that many of these have gone unchecked and now they've led to despair. They're leading to despair. Here was the man of God in uh, 1 Kings chapter 19. 
and they led to despair. I mean, he fled for his life. He left his servant. He went into the wilderness. He got isolated. And now in that isolation, he is feeling completely discouraged to the point that he's telling this, uh, telling the Lord, I, I don't want to keep going. It's enough. I'm done. It is enough. Now, Lord, take my life for I am no better than my father's. Why would he say that? Why would he say that? He just won. And here he is discouraged to the point of death. Verse five, then he lay as he lay and slept under a broom tree. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, arise and eat. Then he looked and there by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came back the second time and touched him and said, arise and eat because your journey is too great for you. So he rose and ate and drank, and he w- went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights as far as Horeb, the mountain of God. And then he went, of course, uh, you'll remember this, but he went in and he he says, uh, let's see, in verse 9, and then he went into the cave, he spent the night in that place. Behold, the word of the Lord came to him and said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? And what a question from the Lord for many of you. You're in this place of despair. You're in the cave. And the Lord's saying, what are you doing here, Elijah? What are you doing here? Insert your name. What are you doing here? Verse 10. And he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. Verse 11, then he said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord and behold, the Lord passed by. And you'll remember this part because the Lord came uh, in a still small voice. He wasn't in the wind. He wasn't in the earthquake. He wasn't in the fire, but he was in the still small voice. And then you read down just a little bit lower and he says that, uh, and it says that the Lord had reserved prophets that Elijah didn't know about. Remember, Elijah said, I'm alone. I'm the only one left. And God says, I have people, I have resources, I have things that you don't know about. And amazing how the enemy can come in and lie to you and convince you that you don't have what it takes. You don't have enough. And here's Elijah, who this great man of God, who bought into the lie to the point where now he was willing to give up. And the Lord was having to whisper to him and speak to him and say, I have people lined up that you don't even know about. And what's interesting is then he comes off the mountain and what happens? He finds Elisha and Elisha would soon be his predecessor. So not only did God have prophets that Elijah didn't know about, but he had his predecessor lined up, Elisha, someone whom would not only carry Elijah's mantle, but Elisha would go on and have twice as much anointing, twice as many miracles happen in his ministry as that of his predecessor. And so I just believe with all of my heart that God is going to open your eyes. God's going to show you where the enemy has been trying to attack you, been trying to come into your thought life. And God is not only going to expose the enemy, but he's going to open your eyes to see reality to see the truth of what is going on right now, to see the truth of where the enemy has gotten in. And he's also going to strengthen you so that you don't let the enemy in anymore. And I just remember throughout scripture, many times where people were so discouraged. If you remember Hannah, Hannah had just enough strength to make it to the doorway of the tabernacle and to pray a prayer that the prophet would end up seeing, or not the prophet, but the priest would end up seeing and thought she was drunk. And she wasn't drunk. She was weeping and mourning and basically saying, Lord, if you give me a son, I'll do anything. I'll give him back to you. She was praying desperate prayers. And yet God heard her. God answered her prayer, but she was in that place of despair. Penina was ridiculing her. Her husband didn't understand her. The, pro- the priest thought she was drunk. 
she was in despair. And you remember all throughout scripture, you remember uh, Ruth and Naomi and Naomi was like, don't call me Naomi, call me Mara because I am bitter and I am old. She was so much despair. She couldn't see that God had actually taken her back to her home country so that Ruth would end up meeting Boaz and Boaz and Ruth would end up, uh, because he was a kinsman, he would redeem her, bring her into his family and that they would now be in the lineage of the Messiah of Jesus Christ. And so there's so many times where uh, despair can cloud your vision to the point that you don't see that not only did God pull you through past times, but he will pull you through this. And it's very possible that the very desperate situation that you're in, God is coordinating and he is ordaining so that he can be, uh, uh, he can do things that you would not have done in and of yourself. He's positioning you for things that you don't even, uh, yet know about. You remember the prophet and the woman who only had just enough meal and oil for them to make a cake. And she said, I'm going to make this cake. My sons and I are going to eat it and then we're going to die. And remember the prophet said, give me a little bit of that. Give me a little bit of that cake. And he ended up helping this woman to the point that she had enough oil left over because of the word that was spoken to her that she, that, that didn't run out, that didn't run out for her. And she ended up having enough to pay all of her debts. And she ended up being able to feed her, her, her sons and her household for some time. And so she went from being a desperate widow to being abundantly wealthy. Why? Because God is not limited by your limitations, by the limitations of what you see. And so I just bring a message of encouragement to you. I bring a message that would rebuke fear, that would rebuke despair, that would rebuke every lie of the enemy, that would push him back away from you, off of you, in the name of Jesus. So I want to pray, and I really would love for you, especially if you're someone who's been facing this discouragement and this despair, to just maybe right out in front of you, lift your hands and allow the Lord to begin to minister to you as I pray. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person that is discouraged to the place of despair. And I rebuke that spirit off of them in the name of Jesus Christ. Spirit of depression, spirit of anxiety, spirit of discouragement, spirit of intimidation. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. You have no place in the people of God. I speak truth over you, that God is for you. And since God is for you, no human, no demon, no attack against you can prosper. Not one of them cannot prosper. No weapon formed against you will prosper. Listen, no weapon formed against you will prosper. This weapon of despair will not prosper over you or your family. We rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ today. Glory to God. Glory to God. Those who feel intimidated, maybe you feel like your confidence has been blown. Maybe you don't feel like you have the strength to be all that you know God's called you to be. You've even had dreams about what God would do with your life and you just feel intimidated. You feel pushed down. I'm here to expose that that's a spirit. That's not just plain discouragement. That's not just plain personality. That's not just having a bad year. It's not just a, a, a remnant of 2020. No, that is a spirit. And we rebuke that spirit off of you in the name of Jesus. You will not be intimidated. God says about you that everything you put your hand to, it shall prosper. It will prosper in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. All intimidation has to be gone in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You were fearfully and wonderfully made. It has nothing to do with whether you think or other people think that you're qualified. God says you were fearfully and wonderfully made as his workmanship 
created in Christ Jesus for good works that God prepared beforehand. God made you. You are his workmanship. Hallelujah. See, this is a, this is what we do when we have these discouraging thoughts, discouraging spirits come against us. We speak God's truth. We speak God's word to them in Jesus name. Lord, I thank you that you are moving. You are speaking to us. You are pulling off of us things that would try to hold us back. You're rebuking anything that would try to bind us, try to bind our thinking, try to bind our confidence. And Lord, I pray over our church and over the church of Jesus Christ that you would lift every single burden that has been placed and pushed down on us as if we were in captivity, but that we would rise to what you've called us to do in confidence, without fear, without despair, without intimidation. And so I thank you for turning things around with us, for us, in Jesus' name. If you agree, you might just say amen. Even by if you're by yourself, just say amen. Amen, amen. Well, God bless you. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you again on these daily messages. Thank you for watching today. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of these videos. And if you'd like to start a house church, either with The Rock, a four-square church, or with Solid Lives, our global discipleship and church planning ministry, go to one of those websites. Go to therock.com for The Rock or solidlives.com for Solid Lives. Click on House Churches and fill out the interest form. We'd love to partner with you to advance the kingdom of God.